Hi, Roger Hill of Weathering Heights Consulting. This is the Velco Weather Hazards Outlook. This is valid the rest of Tuesday through next Monday, September the 1st, Labor Day. Well, what we're looking at here is we have an area of higher pressure and control. This has been bringing quite a bit of warm weather. This area of higher pressure extends uh, across a wide area, and it will continue that way the rest of today. But tonight, we'll see the encroachment of a weak frontal boundary. This is uh, producing and triggering a few showers and thunderstorms. That'll kind of work into northwestern parts of Vermont and be rather isolated at that. Here's how the scenario sets up over the course of the next uh, few days. Now, what we're looking at here is during the overnight period, roughly about 2 a.m. on Wednesday morning, and you can see it gets into Vermont. I want to call your attention also, this is a Hurricane Category 1 crystal ball. It's going to basically take a track between the uprights between uh, Cape Hatteras, North Carolina, and Bermuda. And uh, Bermuda being about approximately right there. This will be taking a track uh, well out to sea, just produce some large wave action. It looks like on south-facing beaches, that's going to be about it. Not even any cloud cover is the, uh, the uh, Cirrus uh, shield. Uh, a cloud cover will be uh, even out to sea. But uh, we have some pretty good weather developing on the back side of this cold front, and I'll show you that in here in a second. But during the day on Wednesday, we have a chance for some isolated thunderstorm activity. It looks like the best chance will be across western areas of Vermont, and prim primarily, I think, northwestern Vermont, as it looks right now. And as you can see, the precipitation aspect uh, moves on out, but there are some lingering indications of a very weak frontal boundary uh, right across central Vermont or into southern Vermont, so there could be an isolated thunderstorm or two in this particular area. This would be into the evening hours uh, Wednesday evening. Now we get into Thursday, things clear on out. A bit of a northwesterly flow will pull a lot of cool air out of Canada. I'll show you that in a second. But we also have this uh, 1021 millibar area of higher pressure located north of the Great Lakes. This is a significant, it's going to build into the region and give us a couple very nice days. Starting out fairly cool on Thursday, then temperatures moderate on Friday, and we get into Saturday, and we have other issues happening down the road. But this is how the scenario works. 1022 millibar, just about right over the top of Vermont. This would be uh, centered uh, at about 2 o'clock in the afternoon on Friday. Then that area of higher pressure begins to move on out. We have a warm frontal aspect with a strong, gusty, uh, southwesterly flow. It looks like, and this is going to be uh, producing some precipitation into the morning hours on Saturday. It looks like Saturday afternoon things retreat back into Canada, and then we get into basically Saturday night, Sunday, and Monday. And especially when you see this kind of a wave formation with an area of uh, lower pressure in the looks like developing some kind of uh, uh, cyclogenesis, and then this sort of uh, stationary frontal boundary over the region. Uh, Sunday afternoon, it looks like we're going to be seeing copious amounts of precipitation, high precipitable water, uh, all the indications with a lot of high moisture means showers and thunderstorms. So what this does is this uh, ends up uh, crossing the region, it looks like, into Labor Day Monday, and it looks like just beyond pulling away. It looks like uh, Monday night, Labor Day Monday night, and then into the day Tuesday. And then it looks like another area of higher pressure building in briefly thereafter. So fair weather to follow during, uh, looks like, probably the early to mid part of next week. Unfortunately, the weekend not landing in a great position. And this quick look at uh, 850 millibar temperature shows uh, fairly warm conditions. That uh, This is valid basically uh, this afternoon at about 2 o'clock. You can see some of the warmest air kind of working into the region. But as uh, you can see, there's uh, some cooler air off to the north represented by the green temperatures, uh, 4 to 8 degrees Celsius. Again, this is about the... Uh, elevation of the top of Mount Mansfield, or at 850 millibars, 850 pa hectopascals. This uh, is going to be moving in to Thursday, and you can see how it just floods on in. This would be valid uh, 2 p.m. on Thursday afternoon. And as we get into Friday, it starts to pull away. Here's 2 p.m. on Friday afternoon. And then uh, for this coming weekend, a lot of moisture, but along with warmer temperatures, is going to try to overrun some of that cool, cool air and set the stage up for it looks like for a lot of precipitation. At least that's some indications by uh, at least the European model. As we get into the weekend, you see temperatures progressively get warmer. And we're looking at uh, Sunday here with another sharp cold front moving on in. But it doesn't get as uh, cold behind that weather system. So uh, conditions do look like they're going to be uh, holding off in terms of any packages of very, very cold air for the foreseeable future into uh, the middle part of next week. Here's the mediogram uh, looking at the Montpelier observations or forecast models. And uh, after a cool night, we have a high today somewhere around 80 to 85. You can see the uh, 
Temperature trends here, it looks like not as warm, but basically uh, mid to upper 70s for highs during the day on, uh, on Wednesday. And then we get into slightly cooler air with a cool night, 55, followed by daytime highs around 65 on Thursday. That's the coolest day of the week. It looks like a cool night to follow, temperatures around 45. And then by Friday, we get into the uh, a little bit of a warming trend. Slightly cooler at night, uh, warmer at night, and then it continues to uh, you're getting a, a lot of ranges here. But overall, temperatures have a tendency to level off back into the 70s as we get into the weekend. Uh, some rain cooled air could make that into the upper 60s, so we'll be watching that. That's what the European model seems to indicate at this point. And the GFS forecast ensemble seems to match up well with the warmest day uh, this Tuesday afternoon, and temperatures make a bit of a slide, and then they kind of rebound and level off so no real indications for any heat indices other than today but that doesn't seem to be an issue looking real quickly at 850 millibars the top of Mount Mansfield you see temperatures get awfully cool aloft that'll happen on Wednesday uh, into Thursday and then we see uh, temperatures rebound nicely with a little bit of model hesitation here that's kind of an indicator of uh, a lot of uncertainty in the models uh, just down the road Here's a quick look at high temperatures uh, for the next uh, one through five days. Again, the northeast United States are basically a balancing out. It's fairly warm at the start, cools down in the middle of part of the week, so it all averages out. Then a little bit later down the road, three to seven days out, we're looking at the uh, maximum temperature anomalies, again, close to normal. Notice it's uh, cooler than normal across a wide area of the uh, northern part of the country. Uh, projected and uh, this cooling is probably something to do with the passage of the hurricane crystal ball. And here's hurricane crystal ball, uh, category one storm. It looks like it's going to remain a category one storm and turn, turns extratropical roughly, oh, the latitude equal with uh, New Jersey and uh, continues uh, uh, its northbound track in the open ocean. Doesn't even affect any part of North America. Then we have Invest 97L. Uh, this is a disturbance that will be uh, taking a track toward the, um, the Leeward Islands, and, and eventually it could be problematic down the road. This is, of course, Hurricane Crystal Ball. And we have one other issue, a little disturbance. It's not going to affect utilities in the Gulf of Mexico, but uh, it could develop into something as a, a little bit of an easterly wave. This is kind of a tail end of an of a old cold front here. Uh, it has the potential to develop into something there. It could even be named before... Uh, anything develops with this particular wave here. Uh, this will be the next one to watch, but we're talking uh, probably in about a week from now. So to recap, here's the GFS Ensemble showing uh, centered on Burlington. No real issues to worry about, just a tiny, tiny chance of precipitation looks like across uh, the northwest corner of Vermont. That would be the best chance, uh, and that would happen, it looks like, in the morning hours on Wednesday, through the day on Wednesday. Then nothing going on until we get uh, down toward the uh, turn of the month. Unfortunately, this will land on Labor Day weekend, where we are looking at some wetter weather. And some indications are that we could see in excess of uh, an inch and a half across an area across Vermont. So we'll be watching that later down the road. In the meantime, enjoy. Roger Hill, Weathering Heights Consulting.